Finding us in, it's now six o'clock and we begin tonight with this tough day in the courtroom as the Delphi murders trial unfolds. The jury today viewing graphic images of the crime scene where Abby and Libby were found dead. Investigators who were there that the day that the bodies were discovered also took to the witness stand today and they testified about the evidence discovered at the scene. Our senior investigative reporter Bob Siegel was in the courtroom today and he witnessed all the testimony. So Bob, walk us through what happened today in court. Well, I can tell you the families of Abby and Libby had a, a pretty good idea what to expect. And that's because the families got for the first time a chance to see pictures of the crime scene on Saturday. They got to see that in private. One of uh, Libby's grandparents told me that was incredibly difficult, but it was done to help prepare them for today. And this morning, the jury got to see what the families saw. Crime scene investigators from Indiana State Police took the witness stand to share the photos they took the day Abby and Libby were found murdered here in Delphi. A warning, just explaining what the jury saw on a large video screen in the courtroom today, it's disturbing. Jurors got to see 57 separate photos showing not only where the girls were found, but also their injuries. The pictures show Abby and Libby lying in the woods with their throats slit. Libby's body was naked, her face and hands covered in blood. Abby was found in jeans and a sweatshirt, blood on her neck. An investigator testified the ground near them was saturated in blood, and there was also blood on a nearby tree. So I can tell you the jury also saw photographs of sticks that were around the girls, some placed on the girls, it appeared. One of the investigators said that seemed like it was uh, done intentionally, not just done by nature. Also, there was a photo the jury saw, several photos, in fact, of a bullet casing at the crime scene between the girls' bodies. And I can tell you that during a cross-examination, there was a lot of pushback on that. The, the uh, defense pushed back on the state's idea. Uh, the state says they tested that bullet and that they were able to determine that that bullet casing, I should say, matches back to Richard Allen's gun. But during cross-examination, the defense team asked how the bullet casing was handled, why there were no pictures or video um, of that uh, bullet casing being removed from the crime scene. And they suggested to the jury that there were lapses in the chain of custody to protect the integrity of that evidence. So what the defense refers to as sarcastically as the state's magic bullet, that's going to become a really central piece of evidence and issue in this case we're going to hear a lot more about in the days and the weeks ahead and the jury will have to decide just how important and credible that evidence is. Emotional day of testimony. 13 News Emily Longnecker was also in the courtroom. We'll have more on this coming up tonight on 13 News at 11. Bob Siegel reporting live for us tonight in Carroll County. Thank you. Also today, the defense asked to set up some boundaries, some guidelines about what jurors see and hear from video that was on Libby's cell phone. They also want some guidelines about what investigators can be asked about that video. That is a topic that we're going to dig into deeper tonight. Yeah, we're going to be breaking down the day's events in our Delphi debrief on WTHR+. Plus. Our legal analysts will be in studio helping explain what this could mean for this trial. So be sure that you tune in at 10 o'clock every weeknight on our streaming app that's available through Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, and Roku.